So once again, the Donald Trump and MAGA plan is alligator moats, bombing northern Mexico, shooting migrants in the legs, and electrifying the fence and putting spikes on them. I'm gonna come. Look, man, I'm already voting for Trump. You don't have to convince me. A New York jury ruled that Donald Trump has to pay this demented old bag $86 million for defending himself against her retarded allegations. So she's here on TV at MSNBC doing what every normal rape victim does. Laughing giddily alongside these other shrieking harpies that they made sheet orange man out of some money. You get completely <laughs> new wardrobes, new shoes, motorcycle for Crowley, new fishing rod for Robbie. Rachel, what do you want? Penthouse? <laughs> it's yours, Nothing. Rachel. I mean, it's better than pretending to be solid that you were a victim over something that obviously never happened. These people are doing us a favor by highlighting the completely compromised nature of the justice system in Democrat-occupied territory. The ethical and moral societal structure required to serve blind and impartial justice is simply not in place in these areas. I had such a such great ideas for all the good I'm going to do with this money. Yeah, she's going to paint some more rocks blue in her backyard. Maybe a new staircase in her house that leads to nowhere so that her evil menstrual spirits get confused. Yet with this new persecution of Trump comes another big spike in his polling numbers. You all remember Michael Cassidy, the guy that knocked down the statue of Satan in the Iowa Capitol. He's being charged with a hate crime. You heard that right. Yeah, apparently hating Satan is illegal these days in Iowa. Oh, but the statues of Jefferson, Columbus, and Washington get knocked down by retarded activists and none are held accountable. Let's see which one you think is worse here. Knocking down a Baphomet made out of cardboard and tinfoil, or knocking down permanent monuments to American heroes. Which of these warrants being charged with a crime? Hey look, it's Saint Floyd. The Satanic Temple isn't even a religion, so the hate crime classification is egregious and retarded. The Satanic Temple is just a quasi-political movement and gift shop for LARPers and woke losers with no friends to fraternize in. Complete with this super spooky, edgy thematic. With the reversal of Roe, it becomes even more imperative that we assert our claim that Texas inhibits our members' access to protect religious reproductive care. Help me, Texas. The Satanic Temple says that I need to get an abortion. That's right, you protect my constitutional rights, you pussy-ass white man. South Carolina just took down the statue of 7th Vice President James Calhoun and replaced it with Denmark Vesey, a 19th century black man convicted and hanged for plotting a coordinated terrorist attack against white people, telling his followers not to spare one white person they saw. One of his followers testified saying, quote, He explained his plan, saying that they intended to make the attack by setting the governor's mills on fire and also some houses near the water, and as the bells began to ring for the fire, that they should kill every man as he came out of his door, and that the servants in the yard should do it, and that it should be done with axes and clubs, and afterwards they should murder the women and the children, end quote. Yeah, let's see what happens to the people that remove the statue of him. Public displays of blatant anti-whiteism are happening even in hard red states because Republican representatives are lazy pussies that can't identify communistic history scrubbing when they see it. If you're in South Carolina, feel free to call up your local representatives and inform them that they're letting Democrats openly champion a white-hating domestic terrorist. Speaking of leftists promoting harm to children, the CEO of Twitter announced yesterday at a Senate hearing that since Elon Musk purchased the platform in 2022, the number of accounts suspended for distributing trailed exploitative material has risen by 600%. That's probably why I don't notice too many Democrats on there anymore. Uh-oh, someone alert the ADL. You can follow me there at Nuclear Grifter, by the way. By extremely shocking and unpredictable contrast, however, the microblogging platform Mastodon that leftists now use as an alternative to Musk on Twitter has a massive problem with child exploitation. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I didn't really see that one coming. On the company's website, they espouse that their service is safe for all, defending against racism, sexism, and transphobia. Well, I'm glad you got your priorities straight. At the same Senate hearing, Mark Zuckerberg was wrecked over the coals and forced to apologize for instituting an obscenely laissez-faire approach to abusive child content on Facebook. Just watch this insanity. Instagram also displayed the following warning screen to individuals who were searching for child abuse material. The, these results may contain images of child sexual abuse. And then you gave users two choices. Get resources or see results anyway. Mr. Zuckerberg, what the hell were you thinking? All right, Senator. Um, the, the, the basic science behind that is... Love is love. 
that when people are searching for something that is problematic, it's often helpful to, rather than just blocking it, to help direct them towards something that um, that could be helpful for getting them to get help. In, in what I also, understand, get resources. In what sane universe is there a link for C results anyway? Well, because we might be wrong. We we try to trigger this this uh, warning, or we tried to, um, when we. Th- think that there's any chance that the results okay you might be, be wrong let me ask you how many times was this warning screen displayed i don't know but the but the hey, you, you don't know why don't you know I, I i don't know the answer to that off the top of my head it is incredibly easy to monitor this kind of obscene content on social media platforms they just don't care very much having a small full-time team of people monitoring reports of potential child abuse content could dismiss any of these concerns easily additionally ai detection has never been stronger so when facebook and zuckerberg posit that it's simply too difficult to monitor their platform they're uh, they're full of shit these companies employ people that endorse full-term abortion If these Satanists are less concerned about infant dismembering than in the interest of their stockholders, what makes you think they execute any substantial effort behind closed doors regarding depictions or even literal photographs of this perversion? If a user's content is ambiguous and you can't tell if the depiction is of a minor or not, then you fucking remove it. Worst case scenario, there's less legal pornography on Facebook. Oh, the humanity. Twitter is not a perfect social media website, but it does allow much more truth than any other big tech platform. Elon Musk, while being a shady transhumanist that to put chips in people's brains does actually seem to give a shit about the restriction of right-wing ideology online and the suppression of free speech. He's effectively made Twitter a right-wing platform just by letting us speak. At least, most of us. Let's see how long that lasts. The platform operates largely at a loss because the ADL, an anti-white hate group headed by Jonathan Greenblatt, bullied many advertisers into withdrawing their participation. That's a pretty good sign, isn't it? Ol' Ilhan Omar here has quite the extensive rap sheet of subversive speech that will make you reimagine voting rights in this country. Remember this, Jim? Our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. So you're a Somalian first and a Muslim second, huh? Where does the America part come into that? Huh. You know, last time I checked, elected representatives of Americans are supposed to represent America. The only valid stance is that this woman should be expelled from Congress, unnaturalized, and shipped back to the third world where she can't loot the economy. As an elected official of a country, she doesn't represent. Oh yeah, she also interacts with this guy on Twitter. There is power in numbers. Breed like rats and establish global dominance. Inshallah, the 21st century will see the great rise of Islam. Glory be to Allah! Long live the great replacement. So that's a good sign. There is no room in this country for hyphenated Americanism. When I refer to hyphenated Americans, I do not refer to naturalized Americans. Some of the very best Americans I have ever known were naturalized Americans. But a hyphenated American is not an American at all. Any man who carries a hyphen about with him carries a dagger that he's ready to plunge into the vitals of this republic when he gets ready. So if we're against dual loyalty for Ilhan Omar, we have to be against all forms of dual loyalty from elected officials. Dual loyalty is only discussed fractionally online because most of these duplicitous politicians have nationalistic favor for the only foreign state that no one is really allowed to talk about. I'm of course referring to the state of Tasmania. No, you won't ever hear any conservative Inc. members talking about the Tasmanian loyalty going on. Those people like money too much, and Tasmania gives them a lot of it. 